uh, I thank the gentleman from Illinois for holding this uh, special order to talk about the cap and tax proposal that has been offered by uh, Chairman Waxman of the Energy and Commerce Committee and Subcommittee Chairman Markey of the Subcommittee dealing with energy on uh, that committee. And it concerns me greatly, as it co should concern all Americans. You know, uh, when you look at the sources of energy that we have in our country today, uh, this legislation uh, is going to drive up energy costs for the average American. It's going to drive up the costs of a whole lot of other things than simply their electric bills uh, and the cost of other energy that they receive. It's also going to drive up the cost of uh, virtually uh, every good that they receive and a lot of services that they receive as well. Uh, it concerns me greatly. I have served as the ranking member and previously the chairman of the Agriculture Committee. Uh, today I serve as the ranking member on the subcommittee of the Agriculture Committee that deals with energy. Uh, and uh, quite frankly, uh, it is a situation where uh, this is a, uh, a solution in search of a problem. Uh, and quite frankly, the solution is going to create great problems for the American people. What we really need to have in this country, uh, in this time of very severe economic uh, turmoil, uh, people losing their jobs, uh, the economy suffering, we need to be looking at uh, producing more domestic sources of energy of all kinds. Uh, and yet this legislation is going to discourage the production of most of the principal sources of energy that we utilize in our country today, including uh, coal production and nuclear power. Uh, the gentleman may correct me if I'm wrong, but my understanding is that nuclear power, which is completely CO2 gas emission free, uh, is going to not receive any credit for the uh, availability of electricity that is produced from uh, this source, which today produces about 20 percent uh, of all of our electricity in the country. And it uh, uh, seems to me that if you're truly dedicated to solving our problems of uh, energy sources, you'd want to be encouraging increased production of all different sources of energy. Now, nuclear power is very capital intensive, but once you have a new nuclear power plant, it is the cheapest source of electric generation that exists in the country, even far cheaper than coal uh, as a source of energy. And yet, the fact that it is CO2 free doesn't seem to make any difference because there are those in the environmental community who are very hostile to nuclear power production. Even though we have, uh, and countries like France, which now produces more than 75 percent of its electricity from nuclear power have addressed uh, in new and innovative ways the waste disposal issue uh, and the uh, other safety issues that uh, uh, make nuclear power very, very attractive. And then when it comes to coal, you know, more than half of our electricity in this country is generated by coal. Uh, it is a very, very important source of energy, and yet it is treated uh, like the lost uh, uh, stepchild in this uh, legislation because no effort is really made here to help coal uh, address the serious uh, concerns that have been raised by some about uh, the amount of CO2 that is emitted uh, from uh, coal production. That to me uh, does not make any sense. You know, we are the Saudi Arabia of the world in terms of coal production. We have more coal reserves than any other country in the world. And we have tremendous capabilities in terms of long-term ability to generate cheap, low-cost power. And if would there the, is would the gentleman yield on coal just for a uh, second? Because uh, you know, I think this is an important issue, of course, for me. But uh, a couple uh, recent occurrences that just kind of highlight the fact that this bill really is an assault on, assault on coal. And however they try to clean it up, it, it's, it's not working. Um, today uh, or yesterday in the local paper, what did uh, Speaker Pelosi do? She said, the coal-fired power plant here in the Capitol is now switching to natural gas. That coal is gone. The FERC chairman has said, I had a news conference last week. At a news conference briefing held, the United States Energy Association, Willinghoff, told reporters that nuclear and coal power was too expensive. He estimated the cost of building a nuclear plant at about 7,000 per kilowatt and discouraged investors from undertaking such ventures. Uh, so th the signals are no nuclear, no coal. And of course, we know. Uh, so, what are they going to replace it with? 
Well, they like, they don't like coal, they don't like hydro, they don't like nuclear, but they like, they like electricity. They like electricity. They like electricity. I like electricity, <laughs> you like electricity, but you gotta produce it with something. Well, and here's the president's uh, comments. And well, 75% well, of our electricity, people should know, uh, who are paying attention to this issue, should know that 75% of the electricity produced in our country today is produced from coal and nuclear. And here's the president's uh, statement uh, during the campaign. What I've said is that we would put a cap and trade system in place that is more, that is as aggressive, if not more aggressive, than nobody else is out there. So if somebody wants to build a coal-fired power plant, they can't. It's just that it will bankrupt them because they're going to be charged a huge sum for all that greenhouse gas that's being emitted. So the signals are no in a venue when the demand for electricity is going to go up by 30 percent. But we want to limit the ability to produce electricity, which is why we fear the real price escalations. I just want to tie in with well, the, the leadership of this House and in Washington and down at the White House and through the federal agencies are saying no to coal and no to nuclear when we have all these challenges that face us. And they have no good answer in terms of how, what to replace it with. Uh, wind power and solar, two that are very commonly cited, uh, produce just a tiny percentage of the electricity in our country today. I think wind power and solar are great, and I think they have great potential. We should encourage more of them. But there is no way that they are going to replace our traditional sources of generating electricity any time in the near future. And so the natural result is going to be that if you write legislation that heavily penalizes other sources of energy, particularly coal, uh, what you're going to have as a result is much higher energy costs. Uh, and it's going to affect people all across this country in very dramatic ways. And they're going to see it when they open their bill for their, uh, for their electricity. But they're also going to see it in ways that uh, might surprise them in terms of the cost of goods and services and, in fact, in terms of their very livelihood. Because many jobs are going to go outside of this country to other countries like Russia and China and India that have no intention of complying with the same type of a cap and tax system that is being proposed right here in this Congress. Uh, and therefore, they're going to have cheaper sources of energy. China and India right now are building one new coal-fired power plant a week. So are they going to comply with cap and tax? Are they going to reduce their greenhouse gas emissions? No, they're going to dramatically increase those greenhouse gas emissions, and the end result is going to be that they'll be able to produce electricity cheaper, and therefore they'll be able to produce goods cheaper in those countries. They will be a magnet to draw jobs to those places to be manufacturing bases, as they're already growing to be. It's just going to get worse. It's going to accelerate it. You know, even though China has grown so much in terms of its manufacturing in recent years, the United States is still the world's largest manufacturing country. We're going to lose that when this bill takes effect if we don't get the American people to speak out about it and let uh, the members of Congress know that uh, this kind of damaging legislation that will cost jobs and raise the cost of living in this country uh, is not brought to a halt. And you know what? Every source of energy that we have, whether it is coal or nuclear power or oil or natural gas or solar or wind power or geothermal or uh, renewable biofuels, all of them have environmental issues attached to them. You can't name a one that doesn't. Uh, wind power has all kinds of environmental issues attached to them. People have attempted to build wind power facilities in my district and have gotten uh, a great pushback about the effect on birds and bats and on, uh, on view sheds and uh, on noise and so on. Uh, solar uh, generating facilities that have been proposed for the southwest of this country have uh, had lawsuits brought against them to prevent them uh, from uh, uh, building these solar facilities because of the impact it will have on uh, desert vegetation and desert wildlife and so on. Uh, uh, ethanol and other production of renewable fuels have environmental opponents to them as well. So uh, it seems to me that the all of the above approach of 
uh, the Republican conference of promoting the development of new sources of energy, of promoting energy conservation and efficiency, and uh, of promoting the development of all of our sources of energy, including our traditional sources, uh, and producing them domestically to reduce our foreign def trade deficit problems and to create more jobs in this country is the way to go here. And that ought to be the alternative that this Congress turns to instead of a cap and tax government planning scheme that stifles private sector innovation, that causes higher consumer energy prices, that's going to cause job losses and lower wages and stock devaluation. Uh, its uh, potential for abuse and corruption is great. Uh, it's a windfall for certain people who didn't do anything to deserve the benefits they'll get when suddenly they find that they have something to sell or something to trade under this system. Uh, and it's not likely to actually reduce any emissions significantly. This idea that somehow we can reduce greenhouse gas emissions to the extent that we could turn down the thermostat of the world when other countries are going to increase uh, their CO2 emissions around the world uh, is folly. Uh, that's what this legislation is, and uh, it has no guarantee that it will solve the global warming issue uh, that many have focused on. Instead, we do have a guarantee that it will have a devastating impact on our economy. I thank the gentleman for allowing me to uh, speak during this special order.